Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, and this is a Saving Savvy episode. This is actually the third time that I'm trying to record this little video, this little unscripted video, because I've gotten phone calls. Uh, you say, why didn't I turn my phone off? Well, because I'm waiting for a phone call. I've gotten interrupted in other ways. At one point, I stood up and tripped out of my chair. I don't know, maybe I'm not meant to make videos anymore. But I'm going to try one today. So a theme that I've had in many of my videos is, is that any intermediate or above level camera that's been created in the last 10 years can very likely do the vast majority of professional photographic work. Um, even in, if you had some specialty need, let's say you're doing something like uh, sports work or something where you have a lot of action going on, certainly if within that 10 year period, there are a number of cameras that had excellent focusing and could even do something as difficult as that. So, in the last four months or so, I've been working about four days a week taking shots for a customer who's also a friend of mine. And I've been using a particular camera that you might find surprising. Let me show you what it is. Oop, I just ran into my printer. All right, my packet, packet, here it is. What is this amazing camera? It's a Panasonic. GF7, which I bought probably five years ago. Now you're looking at it and you're saying, whoa, Dr. Mike, this is not an intermediate or above level camera. This is a common consumer level camera. How dare you insult us? We know you have full frame cameras and APS-C cameras and fancy micro four third cameras and why are you using that camera? Well, is it because it's the absolute best camera I have that takes the absolute best pictures? Absolutely not, but the right tool for the right job. So the project that I'm working on with him is that he is completely renovating a townhouse. Everything, roof, siding, interior walls, removing trusses, adding a loft, digging out the basement to make it deeper. It's a huge, huge, huge project. And I come along and my job is to document this for his blog and also for advertising and to, as a tool to show up customers and things like that too. So I can certainly go in with a big, nice DSLR or mirrorless camera, but it would be completely out of place because I have to run in, take pictures and run out. Now, a lot of these pictures aren't just static shots. They might be a shot of a, uh, one of his craftsmen doing a particular job. And I can guarantee to you, they're not going to want me to sit there and say, okay, turn the screwdriver a little bit more this way, turn towards the camera. They are working and on the clock. So I go in, take pictures, go out. Go in, take pictures, go out. And I need to be able to have that camera super handy and in my pocket. It's, I can't even in many cases have it around my neck because as I'm climbing down a ladder or, or moving into a muddy basement or something, it would be a nightmare. So this camera offers the best of all worlds for this particular scenario. It has pretty good image quality, just 16 megapixels, but that's more than enough. It has this very tiny little lens on it that um, is maybe not professional grade, but it certainly takes, uh, it has enough clarity in it. It does have a little tilt-up screen, which I'm rather fond of. The screen is a touch screen. Now, I personally have a love-hate relationship with touch screens. When I want them, I love them. But then when I've accidentally pressed the wrong thing or moved the focus point or something, I'm like, Arr. but anyways, it has it, I use it, I like it. It also has a big built-in flash, Just, right? Oh, look at that little flash, right? Well, I know some of you professionals are saying, how dare you use a little flash? You need to use a speed light or maybe some sort of mono light. Well, buddies, that's not gonna happen in this scenario. This is much, much better than let's say a cell phone flash. And I've used it many, many, many times to capture images that it would be absolutely impossible to capture without. And speaking of that, you say, well, why not use your cell phone? Because a micro four thirds camera works a heck of a lot better than a cell phone, even one that's five years old. 
So I've been using this camera. If you want to see some of the pictures, these are not magazine quality. These are blog quality. Go to his website, which is gizmohomecraft.com, G-I-Z-M-O, um, H-O-M-E-C-R-A-F-T.com. I, I did I did pretty much all the photographs on, on, the, on the whole website, but look at the blog page and you can see what I'm doing lately. Again, I'm documenting a process in a non-professional, uh, in, in, in a non-studio way. And that's the way it has to be. This is not uh, some show where I'm going in with actors with makeup and lights and, and all of that, where this, this is the real deal. And in fact, I'll tell you that most of these images are reduced to a 1,000 uh, pixel, uh, megapixel, uh, horizontal um, length. So they are very, very small images. You have to do that because you're loading lots of images on a web page. And you know, if you've got these gigantic images, no one's gonna wait for those pages to load. So, so 16 megapixels is beyond overkill for what I need. However, they are nice when he wants to use those same images, which I'll process as full images in some of his sales um, sort of uh, calls and things like that, where he shows people, oh, this is the kind of work that I do. So, are there any drawbacks? Could I use this little camera for just about anything? You know, the fact of the matter is, I really could. I probably would change out the lens. Um, I, I would be inhibited by not having a hot shoe. However, that would be a very, very big deal for me since I am mostly a stills photographer. Um, so that would be a that would be a big hindrance. But just as far as the quality of the images, they would be just fine. What's the other big downside to using a very consumer-oriented camera for professional work? Let me show you. I gotta go over here for a second. All right. See this little guy? Does he look similar to this little guy here? All right. Why do I have two of these? That's why. So one of the big problems that you have with consumer level cameras is they're not made as robustly as a more professional camera. And what happened to this camera was it was sitting on a little area and I came back and I noticed that it was right where I left it, but there was a little bendy kind of thing in the plastic. And I went, hmm, what happened here? Well, I think someone kind of knocked it off and put it back on, right? Now, I actually used the camera with that little bendy part for a number of weeks, being the economical person that I am. And then one day I tried to twist something and it just kind of just kind of fell apart. But the good news with that is, is that this lens bought on eBay was about, I think, under $250. So it wasn't the end of the world and all is good. Um, so I did work around that. Now, do I still stand by my uh, any camera within 10 years or now probably even longer than that will do most professional work? I absolutely do. And if I was, if I can only have one camera and I was on a limited budget, I would definitely go with a more professional level camera just because of all of the things that you can do with it that um, that just makes life so much easier. Uh, the, the better construction, um, the, the the greater array of controls, um, common things that you see on cameras like a hot shoe or or things that you're just not going to find. Um, I don't need a one eight thousand or faster shutter speed. I could get by with one four thousands e easily. However, there are many other things that I, if I could only have one camera, I would use it. But what I'm trying to tell you guys is don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't just think that you've got, you know, oh my God, I have last year's camera. It just got upgraded. Now I've got to get this year's camera. Or, oh my goodness, I have a, a Sony, but now I've got to go to a Canon. Or I have a Canon, and now I've got to go to a Sony. Or I have a Nikon, but I've got to go to a whatever. Um, you, a, a camera is just a tool. They are wonderful. They are fun. I am an absolute camera junkie. I love playing with them. But I realize that the pictures that I take are coming from me, not from the camera. And even this little old consumer level camera has enough power in it to take the most amazing shots given a little time and thought. Now I'm not saying the shots that I'm posting on his blog page are amazing because they're not. They tell a story and they do that just fine. But 
Could I do landscape photography with this? Could I do portraits with this? I could do many things with it. Honestly, the biggest drawback to this camera, besides the construction quality, is the lack of the hot shoe. So that's what I wanted to say. Uh, if you want to know more about me, check out my blog. It's a completely different uh, experience. It has little to do with cameras. It has more to do with me. It's drmikekuna.com, D-R-M-I-K-E-K-U-N-A.com. If you want to check out my friend's blog, um, that is gizmohomecraft.com. And I really would love it if you would subscribe. I know I'm not making a lot of videos, so if you don't, I understand. I really would love it if you'd give me a thumbs up. That kind of gives me more exposure, you know? If, if people give me thumbs up and stuff, then maybe on some fourth page on YouTube I might pop up and other people, like-minded people, might find me. Because you can find those guys that are selling cameras. They're right at the top of the top of the of the screen, right? They're right there. You want to buy a camera? Oh, there's many of them. But if you just want to love cameras and enjoy talking about cameras, you gotta go a few pages down. Take care everyone. Bye bye.